evaluate the following trig expressions. For my first expression, I have cosine of inverse sine of 3 fifths. The way we start, we want to take the inside expression and set that equal to theta. A language trick lets us move the inverse sine to the other side as sine. So we'll have sine theta equal to 3 fifths. Let's go to a checklist to enumerate the steps we need to proceed. The first thing I want to do is list the range of possible thetas. So I take a look at my function on the inside, that's inverse sine. By definition, the range of thetas that can show up for inverse sine are going to go from minus pi halves to pi halves. So if I'm drawing a picture, I'm going to start from down here, and then I can go through any of the angles all the way up to there, so like that. Next, I want to find the reference angle. What this is going to be is, I want to find the angle in the first quadrant that would satisfy this expression if I threw away any signs that appeared on this side. So in this case, we have sine of theta equals 3 fifths. I don't know the angle that goes with that off the top of my head, but I can at least get the rest of the data that goes with it. So in this case, if I have sine of theta equals 3 fifths, then that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. I can put in an opposite, a hypotenuse, and then using the Pythagorean theorem, we have a 3, 4, 5 triangle, so that has to be a 4 here. I don't know the angle yet, but this will still be useful. Anyway, the reference angle is just going to be called theta for now. I don't know what it's going to wind up actually being until we do the next step, which is going to be I need to find what quadrant we're working in, and then I can adjust my answer based on the sign that shows up in the expression here. So let's take a look. So I have sine of theta equals 3 fifths, and we're between minus pi halves and pi halves. Remember that sine represents the y value in the unit circle, so that's saying y equals 3 fifths. So that's going to be this horizontal line here, and I take a look at where it cuts the unit circle, but only in the range of values that I'm interested in. So I see that we're going to wind up being in the first quadrant for this problem here. Okay, so then I go and see what's, what am I actually interested in looking for. I want the cosine of theta. So the cosine is just going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So I get 4 fifths, and now I have to worry, am I going to have a plus or minus sign in front of this? That's going to be based on the quadrant that I live in. We're in quadrant 1, so let's note cosine is the x value for your angle. So if I'm looking at theta in quadrant 1, the x value is always going to be positive, so we go with the positive 4 fifths, and that's going to be the final answer try another one, a little bit more teeth in it. Let's try tan of sine inverse of minus 3 fifths. So first we'll just do the language trick. I'm going to rewrite this inside as theta and then move the sine inverse to the other side giving me sine of theta equals minus 3 fifths. Our range is going to be between minus pi halves and pi halves. So I mark that down. Now if you notice, if I throw away the minus sign to get the reference angle, we're just looking at the same thing we had in the first part. So the reference angle is just going to be the angle I used in this part A. Now the quadrant's going to change though. Let's take a look at what we're trying to do with our actual sign. So sine of theta equals minus 3 fifths. That's the y value, so we're looking at y equal to minus 3 fifths. So that's going to be below the x-axis, and we note that we're in the fourth quadrant. Okay, quadrant four. What I ultimately want to get hold of is tangent. So let's see what sine tangent has when we're in quadrant four. Tangent's equal to sine over cosine. The y value when I'm in quadrant 4, we're below the x-axis, so that's negative. The cosine, 
which is the x value, is going to be positive since it's on this side of the y-axis. So I have a negative over a positive, which gives me a negative. So when I get my answer, I'm going to put in a minus sign in front for the tangent. We go to the reference angle to get the rest. If I want tangent, that's opposite over adjacent. So opposite is 3, adjacent is 4. And so my tangent is minus 3 fourths. For a final expression, let's look at cosecant of secant inverse of radical 2. So the idea here, it's not so much to work with a difficult angle, it's just to work with cosecant and secant. So I have the inside secant inverse of radical 2 equal to theta. I want to use our language trick to unravel that, pushing the secant to the other side. So I have secant theta equals radical 2. Now I need to go and figure out what the range of values for theta can be. Look that up. That's 0 to pi, and we throw away pi halves. Because secant is 1 over cosine theta, and cosine of pi halves is 0, we don't want to divide by 0, so I throw that away. Okay, anyway, on the graph, on the unit circle, the range is just going to be the top piece of the circle. We unravel what secant's saying. This is 1 over cosine theta equal to radical 2. So if I flip things over, cosine of theta equals 1 over radical 2. Having that radical 2 in the bottom isn't very illuminating, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by radical 2. In the bottom, we get a 2, and we get a radical 2 on top. Now that looks familiar. I know my reference angle is going to be pi fourths. So note also, having that, okay, reference angle is pi fourths. We also want to know what quadrant we're in here. So let's take a look. If the cosine of theta is radical 2 over 2, that's the same as saying x equals radical 2 over 2. So we have this horizontal, we have this vertical line here, and that's going to cut at a point in quadrant 1. So when I get my final answer, we're going to have to go through quadrant 1. Okay, cosecant of theta equals cosecant of pi fourths. That's my reference angle, but we're in quadrant 1. So that is the angle itself. Cosecant just says 1 over sine. So we're looking at 1 over sine of pi fourths, or 1 over radical 2 over 2. We flip the 2 up. That gives me 2 over radical 2. I can break 2 into radical 2 times radical 2. We get rid of one of each of those, and this collapses to radical 2.